Hi, this is Jen from Ugly Art Room. I'm Hester Kuka. I'm the curator of the Art Center. And we're here today for March's Mail Art Challenge. First piece is from Michael Wagner, and it's actually from Germany. Oh, it's two pieces. This is pretty nice. I've never seen anything like it. And one of them really looks like a guy. This one. This one looks more like an alien. <laughs> I really like the softness of the feels. The texture is really nice and um, I think the coloring, the, t the palette is also quite beautiful and personal. I like how the digitalization of the image corresponds to what you would imagine colors start looking yeah. like when you yeah. start digitalizing them. This is from KD Messer. She's from Oregon, called Self-Portrait Vegan Life. An entirely hand-drawn, slightly primitive. There's a pig in there, and uh, a bear, bear. and like a, uh, a dog, or a fox. Fox, a dog, yeah, you know, similar. same difference. Yeah. And a multi-personality. It's like an angel and a devil. Oh, on one shoulder. Eat Eat the pig meat. and that pig. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> I know a lot of vegans too. Who Definitely does. don't stick to their... Oh, when bacon comes oh. into play. <laughs> exactly. Okay, our next piece is from a local artist, and his name is Jack Compare. This is a pretty awesome piece because he created this box of cereal that he can read hipster bits on it. <laughs> Oh, this is a deep one, and I think the detail in it is just stupendous, and the, the craftsmanship, quite wonderful. So, Jack, why are you not in the community open, pray tell? <laughs> Ingredients, delusion, trivia, lust for entertainment, lust generally. To have something that is such a commentary on our culture, and so many people are really defined by consumerism. Great commentary and quite funny too. The best political art that oh, there is. Yeah. This next piece is from Portland, from Tara Denzel. Okay. She's an artist that was in our last show. She did a sculpture, so it's, it came in a box, and it's wrapped up in some cute fabric. Uh -oh. oh, this is so very nice. And it even has a nice little hanging. Oh my So you can gosh. just hang it right off on your wall. So this is called Hundeliebe. And she put in parenthesis dog love for those who do not know German. Actually, my German teacher thought I was... It's very nicely sculpted. Oh, it's really quite wonderful does look like her because I know what she oh, looks really? like. Yeah, it's oh. her, for, to do such a little tiny sculpture of oh, your own it's face. Just... So our next piece is from Natso McKissack and she is from LA. It's got a lovely texture and a little bit of a sparkle. For one you have to look very at yourself, very concentrated and analytical. And now you suddenly, even more than when you put makeup on, see the the weird part of, uh, <laughs> of your face. And maybe she was sad when she made it. So even though the middle is really heavy in terms of detail and in terms of the focal point of it, there's some kind of hope in the color around the edges. Absolutely, so. that yellow and that, that pale blue. She might be sad, but not desperate. Did we actually say this was about self-portraits? This is about self-portraits. <laughs> Our next piece is from Boulder, Colorado. Oh, she's beautiful. Dear Ugly Art Room, I love your monthly challenges. Thank you. This is from Saskia Mick, and it's called The Girl with the Scar. Oh, the detail, especially around her eyes, is very interesting. She used a tiny little brush, and something happened to her. Close to her eye is where the scar is. Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty fresh. It's more gashed than uh -huh. a scar. It's almost still, well, who knows. I like that the flowers, which look like peonies, oh, are yeah. not colored in. They're just yeah. outlined. And I think somehow brings her, her face forward and, and that's where your attention should go. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next piece is from Mine Lee and it's from Portland, Oregon. I like that she's on the bottom 
And then there's this dark space above her. I think there's some hair going up there. Oh, don't yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I like how she folded this over. Yeah. I've never seen anybody do that. With, and how she kept the sides a little Rough. unworked. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's beautifully painted. Yeah. Very light, mm -hmm. actually, although the, there's n not much of a brush stroke. What do you think about that she's looking off with her eyes closed? I think she's trying to be very contemplative, trying to be in her moment only. She's definitely not looking outward. We're, with some of the other portraits, they were really looking. Mm -hmm. She's not. She's just not wanting to be aware of her surroundings. Mm. That's what I think. Our next piece Ooh. is from Brooklyn. And the artist is Midori Okuyama. It's partly a photograph right in here, where she is shown from the side and the back while she's looking at herself, painted. I love that idea. I it's like when art plays on the viewer being viewed yeah. as well. And the composition in terms of the placement is interesting. It almost yeah. looks like a book. This empty space is really important in the whole thing. Like there's a future or yeah. there's a something yet to be written. Um, the next one is from an artist named Sapria Chuk. She is from Tustin, California. The other way around? I'm not sure. Oh, there you go. This is a very, very slick material. It's Indian ink on Yupo paper. It's half transparent, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're getting these funny shadows. I love this. What would you say about the expression of this face? I like how complicated it is. Yeah. People are not simple. She's perhaps trying to conceal something. It's really interesting. The feel of it is very nice. Yupo is really hot. Now, our next piece is from an artist whose name is Tyler Davis. Ooh. This artist is from Berkeley, California. It is very feminine, mm -hmm. I think. Also black and white in such a different way. The writing below it, to, oh, it's hashtags. Mm -hmm. okay. I like that it's hashtags. I like that it says selfie. I, and I like the way the pieces also looks like there's movement going on. Oh, yeah. I think that is she being washed away or lost or, or is it like technology's moving really yeah. quickly yeah. that the writing in and of itself looks like a piece of artwork yeah it does and it's confusing there is hashtag so pretty but there's also a hashtag monster right so it, this one was dropped off so it violates our rules but we allow rule breaking and then i'm wondering if there's two artists because on this one it says rl thompson and in this one the name says ethereal delusions which I don't know if is that a would name? be a name. But, uh, and these are digital paintings. It's see. very interesting. I can see a body here. Shoulder and an arm and a hand. It's interesting because when you look at a self-portrait or you look at a face, you're looking at specific cues that your, your brain is interpreting as a face. Yeah. They say that abstract art got... got discovered mm -hmm. by Kandinsky when he was looking in a studio with a painting not straight up but on its side oh. and so he didn't immediately see the the oh. picture but he did like the composition oh that's really cool and went from there and he is considered the father of non-representational art okay. I'm intrigued by this uh, the next piece also violates our rule. He's a local artist in Corvallis. His name is Jeff Hess. Oh, nice, Jeff. It's reflecting a lot. I hope you don't see yourself like that, Jeff. Splashed <laughs> to the floor, lost forever. <laughs> um. In reality, when you look at the grand scheme of things, we are That's what but, we a, are. Drop of but a drop liquid of liquid in the middle of oh, the yeah. universe. Yeah. So, thanks so much for everyone for participating in this. We got so many great pieces of art. And thanks yeah. to Hester for being our guest curator. <laughs> <laughs>